If you watched the 2021 Netflix movie Don't Look Up, you'll know it's a little less of your typical end-of-the-world film and more of a message. We're constantly urged to look at things from a different perspective as we watch environmental and political satire. Climate change is real, guys. Bill Nye the Science Guy thinks the dark comedy hits painfully close to reality. Continue watching to learn everything we know so far. First up, we should be urging action against climate change. Dangerous waters, deadly tornadoes, and collapsing houses. All of these elements are reminiscent of the 1939 classic fantasy film The Wizard of Oz, but Dorothy's dreams aren't the only place they can be found. In fact, we're living through them. Bill Nye's disturbing new Peacock docuseries The End is Nigh, which is currently streaming, also features these themes. Over six episodes, each focused on a different disaster such as killer asteroids and earthquakes, the old TV scientist displays all the harsh realities of living through mass disasters disasters, while also making urgent pleas for meaningful climate change action. And people should really be listening to him. The science star thinks that if someone's old enough to deal with talking trees or flying monkeys, they can definitely watch his show. Nye, the now 66-year-old educational TV star, was a hit and much loved by a whole generation of people. In the mid-90s, he became a household name because of his PBS show, The Beloved Bill Nye the Science Guy. And to this date, he's been active in spreading scientific knowledge. Later, he even went on to tackle science deniers in his 2017 Netflix production, Bill Nye Saves the World. The guy's serious about it. He even helps us through natural disasters. The science celebrity began working on his TV series The End is Nigh in December of 2020. With help from its executive producer Seth MacFarlane of The Orville and Brannon Braga from the Star Trek franchise, the series was primarily shot in Montreal at a soundstage. He used the best best kind of digital effects to showcase how it might look when you try to dodge debris or escape floodwaters during a crazy hurricane. Not exactly a situation we hope to see ourselves in, but if there's something we learned from 2020 is that anything can happen. After the last two and a half years, a series that shows apocalyptic events may not be anybody's idea of comfort viewing, but Bill says you'd actually be surprised. He believes that when things are going well and we're happy, we watch comedies, we watch anxiety and inducing entertainment when things are stressful. And he's not wrong. That is what we do. The amount of people who watched Contagion during the pandemic is alarming. Something weird about humans. But at least the show isn't all doom and gloomy. Don't worry, the show isn't all depressing and miserable. Each episode ends with Nye addressing scientific solutions to these climate issues. He even motivates viewers to take action on their own. For example, he urges us to vote for legislators who intend to address these issues issues, and to consider the environment and the future when doing so. He says we won't get anything done if we're not optimistic. Plus, his optimism is really why we love him so much. Even the executive producer of the show thinks so. He thinks Nye's combination of brain power and hopefulness is what makes him so endearing to viewers of all ages. He says the science star is a rare commodity in a world full of celebrity voices of all kinds putting out misinformation and superstition. Carl Sagan's and Neil deGrasse Tyson's are as rare as they are valuable. We're blessed to have Bill. Having to deal with on-screen disasters and end as nigh has forced the star to evaluate how he would deal with them in real life. He's most concerned about the possibility of a coronal mass ejection, which is when highly charged particles from the sun potentially create a magnetic field that causes widespread power outages on Earth. He also mentions the recent flooding in Kentucky, which took the lives of at least 37 individuals and left hundreds hundreds more homeless. The man says that these massive floods happened very quickly, and people lack the resources to try to escape. Now he's prepared, but are you? The mechanical engineer turned TV personality strives to always be prepared for extreme natural disasters. He has 45 gallons of water kept in various locations around his home in California. He tells us that if there is an earthquake, you may be unable to access certain areas of the house. It could be hidden beneath debris. It's all very bleak, but it's not impossible. He also suggests keeping shoes near the bed in case a disaster occurs in the middle of the night, leaving the floor scattered with broken glass and slabs with exposed nails. We bet you didn't even think of this. Yeah, neither did we. So that's why he loves these end-of-the-world type movies. End-of-the-world films, such as the 2004 one The Day After Tomorrow and last year's celebrity-packed Don't Look Up on Netflix, are praised by Nye for their lifelike science portrayal. 
hills. Even so, he claims Don't Look Up, which is about two climate scientists who warn of an approaching meteor strike, is preaching to the choir. Bill said he wouldn't be shocked if the irony of the Netflix satirical movie is lost on the people for whom it was written, because it's so frighteningly close to what's going on in the real world right now. Just like how in the movie the message surpassed their heads, not many people understand the gravity behind the situation. Also, he's just doing his best. The rest is on us. But that's not all he's done. Apart from all his work with his new show, Nye speaks quite often on climate change panels and serves as CEO of the Planetary Society, which is a non-profit organization that promotes space exploration. He took some vows and married the very clever and funny Liza Mundy, a writer and journalist, earlier this summer. He even cutely said that they've been married three months and are still as happy as newlyweds. What's more is that he can't seem to get away from the Bill Nye the Science Guy theme song, which strangers cheer at him at least one time every day. Nye says he enjoys the song and thinks it's fantastic. He tells the story of running into the guy who wrote the song, Mike Green, at the local supermarket a while back. He went up to him and was like, hey man, that was outstanding work. If you were a child in the 90s, you would know what he's talking about. We hope you're enjoying the video so far. Keep watching as we talk about some of the craziest moments from Don't Look Up. First up, Streep isn't a fan of facts as a president. After Michigan State professor Randall Mindy, played by DiCaprio, and PhD candidate Kate DiBiaschi, aka J-Law, foresee the large comics direct hit on Earth in six months and two weeks, they decide to take some action. They wander up to the White House with Teddy Oglethorpe, head of the Planetary Defense Coordination Office, which is an actual thing, by the way, and inform President Janie Orlean, played by Streep, about this upcoming mass extinction. She and her staff, along with her dumb chief of staff son Jason, played by the fabulous Jonah Hill, couldn't care less. Randall warns that the comet has the strength of a million Hiroshima bombs, but she dismisses the grave threat because, duh, the midterm elections are three weeks away, and such news would cause her party to end up losing control of Congress. Sound familiar? Next, is the USA failing to Armageddon the sitch? Eventually, the government is forced to acknowledge that a comet is heading its way when a sick scandal, including the president and the tragedy of a Supreme Court nominee who's also a former nude model, threatens her approval ratings, she sends a racist mercenary into space as a public relations stunt to blow the comet off course. When weird and quirky tech guru Peter Isherwell, who kind of mirrors Steve Jobs, discovers the comet contains trillions of dollars worth of valuable materials used to make cell phones, his space shuttle literally turns around, and the mission is cancelled. Then, on to a new plan. They launch drones into space to fragment the comic into smaller bits that can be mined by rich people. Kate mistakenly informs a shrimp restaurant packed with diners about what's going on and causes a riot. Finally, that grande scene. Just weeks before the collision, the comet divides America. Those who see it in the sky join the hashtag Just Look Up movement to accept their fate, while Orlean gives rise to a right-wing fake news campaign with the slogan, Don't Look Up. She isn't lucky enough to have a young pop star on her side. Riley and Cello perform Just Look Up, a nicely written over-the-top bop at the for real last concert to save the world. Can't say we didn't enjoy it. That's a wrap for this video. How do you feel about this Netflix movie hitting close to home? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.